rang the ship's bell and shouted at the top of his voice, Everyone, run for your lives. May Allah preserve you. Drop your gear and get back to the ship as fast as you can. We looked up in astonishment. And as we did so, we felt the ground heaving and hoeing under our feet. The formerly calm sea swirled around the island and great waves broke against the shore. Then the very centre of the island curled up in a great arc and those who had not made it back to the ship began to slide down into the foaming seawater. I was among them, but as I fell headlong I grabbed hold of a wooden trough for washing clothes. This saved my life, for when I found myself in the raging water I clambered onto it. For a while the waves tossed me to and fro as I sat astride my makeshift lifeboat, but I managed to stay afloat. I now saw that we had not landed on an island as we had thought, but on the back of an enormous whale. Somehow sand had settled on him and trees and vegetation had grown on his back. He must have lain still for many a year. But when we landed on him, and some of us started fires, that must have annoyed him and woken him from his sleep. He flipped his tail and thrashed the water, and a great wave picked me up and washed me further still. Now I was truly on my own, with no chance of being picked up by the ship. Night fell and I prepared to meet my doom. But the morning brought me to the shore of a high-hilled island. I scrambled ashore, where I found my legs were cramped and my feet numb. I fell onto the ground like a dead man, and lay for a long time with my eyes closed. It was some time before I began to crawl on my hands and knees towards the edge of the woods, where I found nuts, berries and reviving spring water. Feeling somewhat better, I began to explore the island and found it to be a pleasant one. After walking some time, I caught the outline of a living thing. Drawing closer, I saw it to be a beautiful and noble horse, tethered on the beach. I stooped down and picked a clutch of long grass still wet with the morning dew and took it to the horse, who was a gentle and lovely mare. She nibbled it out of the palm of my hand. Then, all of a sudden, something startled her. She neighed and pulled at her rope. Looking round, I saw emerging from the waves a giant horse a white sea stallion, who was coming for the mare. I was as startled as the mare by this impossible creature, and I ran back to the cover of the woods. From there, I saw that the stallion had taken the mare's rope in his mouth and was dragging her into the sea where surely she would drown. This sight filled my heart with pity. I picked up a stick and ran back to the beach where I began to beat the sea stallion around the head. He might surely have turned and kicked me to death, but so furious was my attack that he thought better of it, and ran back into the waves from where he had come. The mare was still frisking to and fro with fright, but I took the rope and calmed her down. A few minutes later, I was joined on the beach by a man who called out to me, Who are you, and where are you from? My lord, I replied, I am Sinbad the sailor, whose ship landed on the back of a great whale, and who would have drowned had not Allah preserved me and sent me a wooden trough, clinging to which I was washed ashore here on this lovely island. And now I've told you who I am, 
please return the favour and tell me who you are. He replied, I am one of the king's grooms, and I look after his favourite mare, whom you just saved from being dragged into the sea and drowned by the sea stallion. And this encounter proved to be my great fortune, for the groom led me to the capital city and the palace. Here I had the honour of meeting King Mirjan, and when I told him my story, he marvelled and said, By Allah, you have indeed been miraculously preserved. The fates must have decreed a long life for you, or you would have surely been drowned a thousand times over. You are one who is blessed by Allah for your safety. Believing me to be favoured by God, he treated me kindly. Indeed, he gave me a lucrative job as master of his port and registrar of all the ships that put in there. One day, the very same ship that I had sailed in visited the island. The captain recognised me immediately and embraced me in his arms. Your goods are still safe in the hull of my ship, he said. This was the most unexpected good news, thanks be to Allah. I offered the goods as a gift to King Mirjan, who had shown me such good favour. In return, he made me a gift of treasure that was worth twenty times its value. We sailed to Basra, where I increased the value of my goods another tenfold in the marketplace. In return, he made me a gift of treasure that was worth twenty times the value. We sailed to Basra, where I increased the value of my goods another tenfold in the marketplace. And so I returned to Baghdad as a wealthy man. I bought this palace and many servants and set up a great establishment and soon began to forget all that I had suffered This, then, is my first miraculous story. Tomorrow I shall tell you the tale of my second of seven voyages, if you will return to my house. And so saying, Sinbad the sailor gave Sinbad the porter a hundred gold coins for his time, and the porter left for his humble home, pondering his great good fortune.